Hey guys, Farrell Artist here, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to blend black through purple to white using Prismacolor pencils. So the idea of this tutorial is to be a short quick fire session where you can watch in real time so nothing's sped up and you can see me blending through, giving you my tips and advice and we'll do a little bonus section at the end as well to cover details that you can add on top of Prismacolor pencils. All right, so we're just gonna jump straight into it. So over on the left-hand side, uh, I'm gonna start off with black. So this is gonna be layer one, okay? Um, so the thing to remember here is to use extremely light pressure. Um, we are just marking out the area where these colors are going to be to start with. Okay, so I'm just gonna start off on this side. So what we wanna do is really light pressure and a light circular motion, okay? So you can use sort of long circular or small, um, compressed circles like this. All right, now the reason for that is it's gonna stop you getting lines in your drawing and also when you're uh, doing an actual piece of art, not just a small practice rectangle, it's gonna help add texture and just allow things to smooth out quite a lot. All right, so I'm just gonna mark this area out here, just, you know, quite roughly to start with. Really light pressure, like I said. And that is it, right? I'm gonna put the black to one side and move on to my next color here, which is violet PC932. All right, so that's the next color down. And I'm just gonna start marking the area where that's gonna be, all right? I'm just trying to start with to avoid any sharp uh, points on the lead so it doesn't score and uh, make any dark marks. I just want this to be really light. All right, so I'm putting this next to it, but I'm also going to overlap back over the black, okay? So I'm gonna go all the way back uh, half or even three quarters of the way towards the end of this rectangle. And you should see it getting darker and darker here. And again, this is just still really light pressure. You know, we're not doing anything heavy here. This is just the first layer. So going back over that nice circular motion, we're just marking out where our colors are gonna be. Okay, so circular motion around here, light pressure. Right, we're done with violet. So next onto process red, uh, you can see uh, I like this color, that's why I haven't got much of a pencil left here. And again, same deal. Nice and light, circular motion. This is just marking out where we're gonna be what we're, and planning what we're doing. So we know where the darks are, we know where the lights are. And again, I'm gonna go back into the previous color. So back into the violet. And again, you'll see it going dark. Very light pressure. You don't wanna be doing anything drastic. Okay, so gently, gently, nice circular motion. And that's it for the process red. And then onto lilac, so that's our next color. So we don't wanna um, have our pencils too sharp for doing this. You can start off with a nice uh, sharp lead, but it's gonna make it difficult to um, not press too hard, okay? So if you've got a sharp lead, just bear that in mind. Be very careful for the first, uh, few minutes whilst the lead is wearing itself down to um, a bit more blunt. Okay, so same for lilac, we're going back into the process red. Not pushing hard at all. And this paper I'm using here is toned paper. Okay, so that's, uh, this is Arteza toned paper. Uh, you can use Strathmore, you can use any brand of toned paper for this, it, sh it shouldn't matter. Um, you can do it on white paper as well. It's just um, toned, uh, gives it a nice pop. Okay, so you can use any from your local store, should be fine. And then finally, we're done with the lilac, we're gonna go over to the white. And we're just gonna very lightly fill in this end area and overlap back into the lilac. And that will be the end of our first layer. Okay. And what I wanna do with this is I'm actually going I'm planning to do a mini series of these and I'd like to do uh, a lot of different colors and we can do them on different shapes or even some actual characters. Um, if you guys let me know down in the comments if this is something you're interested in, you enjoyed it or you didn't enjoy it, let me know. Um, I like making this kind of content, um, but I only wanna make it if people are interested in watching it. So, um, you know, let, let me know what you think and uh, We'll tailor the content to that. Okay, so that's the end of the first process, okay? So we've just uh, marked down where each color is going and we've overlapped them either side on each one, okay? So nothing drastic, all really light pressure, um, and that gives us um, free reign to move on to the second layer, okay? 
So a lot of what you're going to be doing with colored pencils is um, using a lot of patience to go along with it, okay? So you just have to be patient, take your time. Um, you can't rush it. You're not going to get it all done um, really quickly. So back onto the black and I'm just going to use light pressure still. I'm not using any heavy pressure and I'm just going to darken these areas, okay? Uh, especially with the black, it can be um, easy to put it down too dark to start with and then um, it's hard to blend into, all right? So we're just laying that down and then we can use a slightly more firm pressure on the left hand side, but as we start moving towards uh, the violet color here, we want to lighten that pressure up quite a bit. Really don't want to push too hard here because we want the colors to mix together, which will happen over the next couple of layers. So just add in the color there. And again, this area is going to be mostly black over here. So doesn't matter if we get a little bit dark. And then we're going to move on to violet. So back into the violet area. And you'll see it start getting darker with each layer. Again, very light pressure and go back into the black area. All right, and then at the end of this tutorial as well, I may uh, rotate the drawing around and show you something that you can do with it to make it a little bit different. Okay, so go back into the black, still very light pressure. You should start seeing the colors almost mixing together slightly. And then again, we want to go forward into the next color, the process red, very light pressure this way. There's a good thing about Prismacolor pencils is they're so, they're so soft and so waxy that they're easy to blend together as long as you're careful. And it's almost like uh, mixing paint once you get going. So now we're going to move on to process red. And when you're doing this in practice on your actual drawings, you can really uh, take your time and, and, and use as many layers as you, as you want. Um, what you'll find is that once you hit a certain point, you won't be able to add any more layers because you've pushed all the tooth down on the paper. Um, so light pressure will mean you can add more layers. If you come in straight away with really firm pressure, uh, you're not going to be able to add any more colors on top and it's all just going to not quite work out how you want. So going back into the violet and mixing with that, should see the two colors having a slight mix there. Okay, and then very lightly down into the lilac. Just like that. So then we can move on to our lilac color and do the same thing. Very light pressure back into the process red. And again, these two colors, you'll really start to mix together at this point. There's still light pressure though, don't you know, don't, you don't want to be pushing too hard. And you may get this kind of uh, streaky effect or you may go outside of the lines, um, you know, if you're on your actual drawing and you go outside the lines, you know, don't panic. Um, and also don't judge yourself too much when you're only halfway through this process because, you know, too many times I've done this myself and uh, when you're part finished with a drawing, it's easy to look at it and think that it sucks. Um, but you need to take it to the finish and then more often than not, it will look a lot better once you've finished and you can be happy with the end result. And even if you're not, you know, um, you would have learned something along the way. So it's still worth pushing it to the finish and not sort of giving up too easy. There's always something to be learned from doing that. And a lot of mistakes can be corrected um, using the white. Um, the white uh, is pretty much been manufactured in Hogwarts, I think which uh, it can just fix, uh, you know, a, a, lot of, a lot of sins. Shout out if you're a Harry Potter fan in the comments. In fact, actually the, the real uh, magical white is the Caran d'Ache white. Um, I only have Prismacolor and um, Arteza pencils, so I can do separate tutorials for those two. If there are any other popular brands um, that anyone wants me to cover, um, if it's popular enough, then I'll buy the pencils and I can learn to use them and give you a tutorial for that. So using the white here, same as the others, we're going back into the lilac. And we're just gently smoothing that around, okay? So we can go quite far up, just using real light pressure. 
the white allows us to do a lot of um, a lot of blending. It's, like I said, it's um, it's quite a good tool for fixing things. Um, you may be wondering at this point if you could use the colorless blender, and um, I don't normally use it, and I don't recommend it. In fact, in one of my other videos, I snapped one in half, um, which <laughs> upset a few people, I think, but. Um, I don't find them necessary. I've only used them maybe once or twice when I've over blended and I've needed to smooth out colors. Um, so this takes us to, that's the end of the second layer. So you can start to see now that things are um, starting to blur together a little bit. Um, so over the next sort of two layers and the final details, um, we should get to where we need to be. So I'm gonna start putting down a little bit more pressure now, okay? So especially with this black, cause I know this far left section um, is going to is going to be um, just solid black anyway. So circular motion, working my way, and then I'm gonna lighten up my pressure as I get towards uh, the violet color because again, we want, we, we still got a lot more color mixing to do. So gently, gently, especially as we get over on top of the, on top of the violet. So on this third layer, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back and fourth between colors a little bit. So instead of going black, violet, process red, lilac, white, I'm gonna go black, violet, and then black, violet again. And then I'll go uh, violet, process red, violet, process red like that. So we're gonna skip uh, back again, just to give us extra blending, okay? So it's, it's this point that we're gonna start to do that process. So violet, slightly firmer pressure and moving back into the black area and we can start to push a little bit harder as we get back into the black, but as we come out towards process red, lighten that pressure again. So, and what you'll start to find is over these next few layers that you can, act, you'll, you'll sort of feel the colors being pushed around. You almost, the circular motion almost sort of mixes them up like paint and they can be, uh, they can be pushed around on the paper. And that's what really creates those sort of smooth transitions. Right, so now, like I said, I'm gonna go back to black and then back to violet again. So I'm gonna darken this area again. So we're sort of working our way towards having a solid color. It doesn't matter if you, on these edges, you do like a straight edge like this, and then you can use your small circular motions afterwards because you just don't want it to look like there's any uh, solid lines anywhere in the drawing because um, it looks unnatural unless it's intentional. And this circular motion may feel weird at first when you first start doing it, um, but you get used to it over time and almost become sort of muscle memory um, for you. So just sort of persevere with that and you'll, you'll get used to it and you'll find it makes things a lot easier. Right, and then light pressure again when we get to violet and then a bit more pressure when we get over towards the black area. So you start to see now, you can still see that there's paper uh, showing through the black, which means we still got tooth left in the paper. So if I push really hard, all those um, light dotted areas will disappear and you won't be able to see the paper anymore. And that's what basically the point we want to get to at the end, all right? We don't wanna get there too soon and then it will stop us being able to blend. All right, so back to violet again. And then slightly firmer pressure still as we're going back into the black and mixing those colors you should start to see a bit more of a solid color appearing. And then lighter onto the process red, because we're gonna switch over to that one in a minute. So again, if you go outside the lines like this and you're on your actual drawing, don't worry about that too much. Um, most mistakes can be fixed. You can lift um, colored pencil with an eraser and um, you can correct it in, in lots of different ways. So don't, so don't worry about it. Obviously try to be careful with your in your actual drawing because it's, it's easier to, um, not make a mistake in the first place, but uh, you know, it happens. So, right, now we're gonna go down to process red. So process red here. And again, I'm gonna speed things up and uh, we're gonna start using a bit firmer pressure as we go back into that violet. And again, like I said, we're gonna step back to the violet before we go down to uh, lilac to really um, start to mix those colors well. Mm -hmm. 
If you're enjoying this video, um, don't forget to drop a like on it. Um, it sort of indicates to me that you're enjoying it um, and uh, helps out the channel as well. And make sure you share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel as well. We've been growing nicely. And uh, like I said, if you've been following my stories and things recently, uh, I've had a lot going on with uh, my house renovation, but I'm finally sort of getting back on track and I'm gonna start pumping out these videos, especially these small tutorials if people enjoy them. Um, I, I like making these sort of things, so just let me know what you think in the comments. Right, so going back up into Violet and then I'm gonna switch back over to the Violet to get that mix into the process red nicely. So we're using light pressure here because you have to be careful when you're going into the lighter colors. There's quite, there's a reasonable um, tone difference between violet and process red. So obviously in, in you know, I say in real life, when you're doing your actual drawings, you can use as many colors as you want. You're not restricted to five. I just wanted to restrict this down for a tutorial to make it easier for you to learn uh, if you're just beginning. Um, but if you found uh, purples or colors that are in between these colors, you can use as many as you want. You know, if you've got one of the larger sets of pencils, um, yeah, you can really uh, use the extra there. So yeah, lightly mixing down. And then I'm gonna one more time go to process red. So this is still the third layer at this point. And then down to process red. And back up into the violet to really mix it. Starting to use more firm pressure at this point. And then down into the lilac lightly. Right, now I'm gonna move into Lilac. And same process. So slightly firmer pressure on this third layer. Circular motion back into the process red. Really mix those colors together. And again, just take your time with this and there's no rush. You really, you need to have some patience with uh, color pencil drawings, especially if you're doing something realistic or anything like that, you're gonna really need to sort of uh, take your time. There are quicker um, mediums that you can pick up if you're not, if you don't quite wanna dedicate the time or you want to find it's not quite for you. There's um, your alcohol markers and watercolor are a lot faster, um, but there is something special about um, the vibrant colors and uh, blending that you can get with colored pencils if you take your time. And people are always shocked. If you create something nice, people are always shocked that you've done it with, with pencils, you know? Right, so we're going back up to process red. Uh, yeah, sorry, process red. Sorry, I've lost my way a bit there. There we go, back up to process red, down into the lilac. Time to lilac. Slightly firmer pressure, really pushing that process red around to mix with the lilac. The process red and the lilac are really great colors. I use those two in combination with the white on a lot of my galaxy drawings when I'm doing the purple sort of hue and um, they always turn out really nice, sort of give a vibrant pinky purple color, it's great. Right, and then down onto the white, which will bring us to the end of layer number three. So white back up into that lilac, and you'll start to, the white sort of mixes so easily with other colors, you'll get this sort of cloudy effect. Um, and you almost have to be a little bit careful not to over blend it. So back up into that lilac. And then you just have to be careful as well that you get sort of um, shavings of the lead as you're um, 
as you're drawing and they'll be all over. So I usually just stop and give it a quick blow. I mean, you can use a dry uh, brush with soft bristles if you wanted to brush them off. I'm just a little bit too lazy for that. So just back up into lilac one more time. And then I'm doing some quite fast, small circular motions for this, just to help it blend down into the white and up into the process red. Okay, and then one last time with the white. And like I said, you can use as many layers as you want uh, for this, but I'll just take you through the ones to get you to the point where you've got a nice sort of smooth blend. Right, so that's the end of layer three. Now, so layer four is really gonna sort of solidify everything here. So I'm gonna go back to my black, and then really I'm gonna put some hard pressure down up in this corner where I know it's gonna be solid black. So I really wanna get rid of the, um, the paper you can see showing through. And you, a little tip as well, once you, because these pencils wear down so quickly, they become blunt, which can be nice for covering larger areas. But if you want to cover something, like you wanna get a sharp edge, I usually just rotate the pencil so that you've got the sharper edge and then you can uh, get right where you need to be. It's one of the downsides for um, Prismacolor pencils is that it's a plus and a minus that they wear down so quickly because they're so soft, they blend amazingly, but they uh, they go blunt very quickly um, and you have to replace them very quickly as well because if you sharpen them, I won't even go into um, the build quality and how easily they break. Uh, but yeah, lighten up the pressure when you get over to the violet because we want to switch to the violet in a second and start pushing that back into that black to try and get a smooth transition. So violet back into the black using firm pressure here. And really mix those two up. And then slightly lighter as you're going down into the process red so you don't leave too dark of a color over the top of it. Covering these edges here. That said, it's all right to put in these straight lines along the edges if you need to, and then just work it in with a small circular motion. And the aim of this layer really is to finalize the colors that you're using finalize the blend between them. So process red, back into the violet there. Using quite firm pressure, pushing the uh, violet around. And then down into the lilac to overlap those two colors. So yeah, in the future I can always do, I'm gonna do some different colors of these, but I can start adding in, you know, we can do a circle with a realistic uh, shading effect, or I can get some, I can make some templates that you guys can download and print of the line art of some Pokemon, um, and we can do some galaxy effects on them. You guys let me know what you wanna see. Um, down in the comments, what's your favorite Pokemon? What's, what, which one would you like to learn how to do in a galaxy format? What colors would you like to see? And uh, if there's any other pencils that you'd uh, like to see how to blend, because they all do work slightly different. It's the same approach, but the Artezas for pencils, for example, are slightly firmer than Prismacolors. Um, the colors are obviously, you've got different choice of colors. So it does um, vary per brand. So onto lilac now back into the process red, make sure we get right up to the edges with that blend in. And we can go right back up to where the process red is. And mix that together. Going right up towards the violet with it now. And we can mix it all. Uh, in that way, not a problem. And then the violet, uh, the lilac, sorry. 
down into the white. And this is all it is, it's this taking your time. <laughs> Say taking my time, even though I'm rushing a little bit during the tutorial because I don't want it to drag on too long for you guys, but down to the white. And back up into the lilac to smooth out those colors. Right, now, so that's the end of the fourth layer. So I'm pretty uh, happy we've got a relatively smooth blend there. Um, I would just for the fifth layer, I'm probably gonna go back over and I'm just gonna try to find any bits where the paper is still showing through that I can smooth out. So that I can see around the edges. I'm not gonna go mad with it, but just to make it look a little bit nicer. And then uh, with the violet as well, there's some bits up here, which haven't quite pushed all the teeth down. Okay, it's looking pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to run a fine liner over the boundary, just to give it a frame. So this is another point uh, to make at this point. So uh, a lot of people will ask, uh, that or state that they have problems with fine liners going over the top of color pencils and it blocking uh, the ink and stopping it from coming out and creating a clean line. And what I found is that does that does happen. Um, I found it a lot worse when I used to use Faber Castell markers, and I've been told by friends um, that Micron as well are um, quite renowned for that. So I use. Um, Copic multi-liners, which still do it, but no way near as badly as uh, my old fine liners did or, or those microns seem to do for other people. Um, you can see it's working quite nicely here. It may just get clogged up every now and then and I'll just need to sort of dab it on my hand or rub the end of it and it will clear it off. So you could do this at the beginning and then just go over it at the end. But that just gives it a sort of clean finish there. And then if I, for example, wanted to clean up any of the bits on the edge, I could just take an eraser and go over the top of those and you can see that that really lifts those up. So you can get rid of those mistakes if you need to. I mean, the darker colors are gonna be obviously more difficult and you've got to be careful not to damage the paper, uh, but you know, this will lift it. Uh, there are other methods, you could use a, a craft knife for gently scraping it up as well. Um, but whilst we're here, I just wanted to do a little bonus part where we can look at adding some details uh, to this. So I just wanted to show you because I get asked quite a lot about it that um, for putting the highlights on my galaxies, I use a jelly roll pen, uh, which is essentially uh, white acrylic ink in a pen. Um, so color pencils, you can layer acrylic paint on top of to add lots of different details. So if you want to layer up your drawings, it really makes them look good. Uh, you can start with a base of um, alcohol markers, color pencil over the top, and then um, acrylic on top for details as well. So um, it's sort of a, a bit of a joke, you know, around the art community that if you uh, use alcohol markers with color pencil on top, it's almost like cheating really. It's like God mode. It's um, so easy to get the blends you want because you have those two layers. So yeah, this white acrylic uh, pen, you can just add stars dotted around. You can get different sizes of these pens so you can make larger or smaller ones. And this one, to be fair, it looks like it's running out a little bit, but yeah, it allows you to add these sort of details on top. And this is what I use for my Galaxy drawings. Um, I do have a pot of white acrylic ink as well, which you can put onto a toothbrush and flick onto the top of the drawing, which gives a nice more scattered effect. Uh, the only issue with that is you need to cover up the outside areas so it doesn't just spray everywhere, especially if you don't want to get it on the rest of your drawing. So yeah, you can add those nicely in there um, on top of the color pencil to give extra details. And lastly, <laughs> so 
So yeah, lastly, if I turn this sideways as well, you can also use your Copic multi-liners or black acrylic ink to create um, silhouettes on, on your drawing. So if you wanted to make this into um, a landscape, you could add trees into here and you could sort of be really careful adding in tree shapes onto here. Something like this. Ooh, not going outside the edge. <laughs> okay, so you could create this kind of thing. And you could layer that up to create a nice scene. And a lot of people use this technique. You can use it to create a, almost like those watercolor drawings that you see and you know, where you have like mountains in the background or overhead power lines. And you can do this with color pencil, which looks really cool, I think. You can obviously, you know, make this whatever you want. And you can do, you know, it doesn't have to just be trees and mountains for a landscape. You can use silhouettes of anything. Um, so you could do silhouettes of people or of characters or anything you want on there. So um, just to show you that those, um, that's what you can do with color pencil. You know, you can layer it with other materials to really get the effect that you want. Um, but I'm gonna call it a day there. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please do let me know. Uh, make sure you like, comment and subscribe to the channel. Um, and I'll make some more of these videos in the future co covering different colors, different materials. You guys let me know what you wanna see. Um, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Cheers.